Well, hello there, HW here, and thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. You know, because we're so into the Kemper, I constantly get this question, HW, what is the best FRFR speaker on the market? What will make my Kemper, my Helix, my Axe FX sound absolutely phenomenal? Or I get a question like this, HW, what FRFR out there is gonna sound most like a guitar cabinet? So we went ahead and got five cabinets. Wanna try them all out, FRFR cabinets, and one traditional guitar cabinet. We got the Mission Engineering Gemini 2, the Alto 312, the Friedman ASM 12, the Line 6 Power Cab Plus, and we got a powered Kemper using my favorite cabinet, and it's running some Scumback M75s. Uh, I've made a ton of profiles for the Kemper with this cabinet, and Scumback M75s are like Scumback's version of uh, just a creamback speaker. So which is the best FRFR speaker cabinet? Now before we take a look at the shootout and talk about the results, there's three things I gotta say about FRFRs. Number one, asking what the best FRFR speaker is is kind of like asking what's the best guitar speaker or what's the best guitar or what's the best pedal. Um, it's just not a very good question. It's subjective. The best FRFR cab for me and my use might not be the best for you and your use. Are you using it live? Are you using it just to practice? Are you using it just for fun? Are you using it on stage to monitor your sound? These are all questions you have to consider. Number two, there's this idea that FRFRs should all sound the same. And as we're gonna hear in this video, they don't all sound the same. The idea is that FRFRs sound the same makes sense at first, but when you think about it, there's so many variables that go into it. FRFR stands for full range flat response, but I think the question should be asked, how flat is the response? I think all of these are going for a full range and they're all hitting at a speaker a solution that isn't doing what a guitar cabinet does. You know, greenbacks lob off a ton of low end. Uh, blues to, you know, really accentuate upper mid-range. Guitar speakers are designed to heavily, heavily influence or color the sound of an amplifier. All of these speakers, though, seem to be not really cutting or boosting, you know, too much in the frequency range, although we do see some pretty dramatic differences across all of these models. I think the question should be asked whenever you're talking about an FRFR speaker is, okay, it's flat response, but how flat is the response? And the only way to really know that is to compare them to each other. And last but not least, none of these are terrible. I mean, they're really not. I think you could buy every one of these units, bring it home, put your Kemper on top, put your Helix on top, uh, put your, your Fractal on top, and, and be happy with it. If you're not comparing them with each other, uh, one unit might have more bass than the other, but you might just naturally dial that out on your system. And I really don't know that you'd ever have a complaint about it. Our minds naturally tell us we've got to choose our favorite, we've got to hate one the most, and this one has to be the best, but really, I think you could buy any of these units and be reasonably happy. Now, considering the price and some of the features you get in some of these, I think there are some clear winners. So, let's see the shootout. <laughs> It's not, uh, it's not the right amount of bass. It's too much bass. What do you think, standing over there? That sounds more mid-rangey, but still with enough bottom end. <laughs> Thank you. 
mean, that thing definitely has the rumble of a guitar cabinet. I don't know about you, but I was really surprised at how different all these sounded, and yet how I kind of like the sound of multiple units. So who wins the shootout? First up, let's talk about the Mission Gemini 2 for a minute. This is sort of a unique solution, and um, it really stands apart from the others. First of all, it's built like a guitar cabinet. It's heavy, it's about 70 pounds, and it's the most premium priced of the bunch. The Mission Engineering uh, Gemini 2, the stereo version that I have, cost $1,400. Um, it's quite a bit more expensive than the cheapest, which is the Alto at 300 bucks, but really, I don't know if it's totally fair to say this compares directly with all the other FRFRs. It's got some other features, and it's the only one that has stereo capability in one cap. Now, Mission does make a 112 version of this that isn't stereo, but this 212 version can be run in mono or stereo. Now, that's a big deal. Think about it. A lot of us really like that our modelers put out stereo effects and how easy it is to run a stereo setup and get it directly to the board. You'd normally need two amplifiers to do that, but we all do it with the Kemper, we all do it with the Axe, we all do it with the Helix. So, what does that mean? Well, it means stereo is really important. If you want to be able to dial in stereo effects and sort of get a spread for them at home and then take your Kemper and run to a Friday night gig or a Sunday night church service, you're not gonna get a stereo field unless you have a stereo cab. Now, the 212 cab having stereo in uh, the same cabinet isn't the widest stereo field you could imagine. You'd get it much wider by using two cabinets, but still, trying it out and playing it in this room right here, it's a stereo feel. You really do hear the ping pongs. That's really unique. And the other thing that's unique about it is this sort of empower knob. So this, this mission cab has the, uh... What do they call it? The empower control. So it can go full flat or it can like make the frequency range smaller, mm -hmm. right? So this is full flat. Like, so this is FR, FR, just like everything else. Here is the empower switch. It's fully on what they call CAD. So this is the most restricted frequency response, most, I guess, closest to a guitar cap. So a lot less high end. So here is like uh, maybe two. If you get, went zero to ten on the dial, here's like two, a little bit of FRFR. Like it's not to it's not fully at the cap setting, it's up a little bit. And I think this is where it sounds the most. So the Mission Engineering Gemini 2 is fairly unique in that it's not just attempting to be a stereo cabinet, but it's also attempting to give you a response and a feel more like a guitar cabinet. That's not a promise that the other FR, FRs are making, and so it's gotta be considered. Are you looking for something to make your modeler sound more like a guitar cabinet? 
mission engineering has that capability. And what's very cool about that feature is that you would be able to sit at home, get more of an amp in the room feel, then if you don't want to take it with you live, you can go to your Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning gig, and you're going to get a direct solution with your modeler that is going to feel more like maybe a mic'd up guitar cab, but at home it felt like an amp in the room. Or you have the option of using it like a cabinet on stage. If you're somebody who wants to have a loud cabinet blaring on stage because you're in a band and the bass player still has their amp going, I mean, this seems like the best solution for that. It's certainly not built like the other ones. There's no molded plastic on this. It's built tough like a guitar cabinet. But just remember, it's 1400 bucks and it's heavy. So my thoughts, if money is no object to you, if the 1500 bucks is not a big deal, if you want something you can play loud on stage, feel like a guitar cabinet, and maybe get more of an amp in the room tone, this might be the way to go for you. Now the cheapest of all these solutions is the Alto 312. Uh, I can't really tell what's different about this unit than the Headrush. Uh, there may be some differences, I'm really not quite sure. If the Headrush version cuts out some of that low bass, Go ahead and get that version, they're the same price. But Alto also makes a version that's a 10 inch speaker. Maybe that has a better bass. That would be the way to go there. But for 300 bucks, it's hard to get mad at this thing. Now it's got no EQ controls on the back. There's nothing you can do about this bass. It's got a weird mid contour switch that just makes the problem worse. Basically, if 300 bucks is all you got or you're looking for a budget solution, the Alto 312 is not terrible. I'm not that impressed with its performance, but the fact that it's 300 bucks and it has a little brother that's 250, the fact that you could get two of these things for 500 and 600 bucks and it leaves it considerably cheaper than some of these other cabinets, I can't give it a thumbs down. So I'm gonna say, if you want a cheap solution, yeah, okay, Alto, if you're on a budget. The Friedman ASM-12 is my personal FRFR speaker that I use all the time. I really do play it every single day. I'm very used to the sound of that one, and I gotta tell you something. After doing the shootout, it's not my favorite. Not at all. Now, I'm probably gonna keep it because I'm pretty happy with it when I'm just playing by myself in this room, but at the end of the day, for $7.99, the extra mid-range you get, the sort of, the highs are really nice in this cab and I like it. They sort of have this chimey, sparkly quality that I think is really pleasant to listen to. The bass, uh, not bad. I think at the end of the day though, at, at the price, $6.99, $7.99, it's just, it's just not a good buy. There's just other stuff you could get. I, I really can't recommend that you have that you get this unit. Now, if you have it already, it's not bad. Um, I don't really think there's that much wrong with it. It's just, it's by far, sort of the least flat sounding. Now for me overall, I think the one that deserves the most consideration is the Line 6 Power Cab Plus, or the Line 6 Power Cab. Uh, the Line 6 Power Cab Plus has a price point of, I don't know, six, 700 bucks, and the regular one, the non-plus version, has a price point of four or $500. Uh, so it's pretty competitive. I mean, it's almost getting down there in the alto range, but it offers some other features. As an FRFR, I thought it was pretty decent. Um, it didn't quite have as nice of highs as I thought the Friedman did. It didn't have a, a, a huge amount of bass, but it was 30 pounds and it was light to carry around. If you need something that you could literally hold a guitar in one, a modeler in one hand, a guitar on your back, and a cabinet in the other, one trip from the car, I mean, hey, Line 6 has a pretty light unit here and it's not bad at all. The price is pretty nice. In addition to that, it's got speaker modeling. Now, we checked out the speaker modeling and um, it was pretty good. I mean, it didn't sound exactly like an amp in the room. Uh, it didn't sound exactly like the real cabinet we used, but you know, it it did a thing. If you want to use some direct profiles with a Kemper or you want to uh, take out the cab block on your Helix and you just want to run that, I mean, it's totally a cool solution. Uh, the Greenback sounded like a Greenback. The Jensen sounded like a Jensen. The, the um, Blue sounded like a Blue. At least to my ear, they did a pretty good job. So overall, Line 6 Power Cab, yeah, thumbs up. I mean, I think it's a good price, especially for the non-plus version. And uh, it's a pretty good FRFR. And um, at the end of the day, that speaker modeling is pretty cool. So to recap, if you've got some extra coin in your pocket and stereo is important to you, it's very important to me, and you want something that gives you some flexibility that maybe can help you sound a little more like a guitar cabinet in the room, I'd say the Mission Engineering Gemini 2 is for you. But if you find yourself a little short on Imperial credits, you may want to check out the Alto. It's cheap, it sounds fine, it's just got too much bass. 
And if you're somewhere in the middle, you might check out the Line 6 Power Cab or Power Cab Plus. It's not a bad price for what you get. It's a decent FRFR. It's light, and it's got the cool feature of speaker modeling. Now, I'm not going to use the speaker modeling live. I'm not going to mic up that cab ever. I'm not going to record with it really ever in that situation. We are already using direct units that we would probably just go direct and use an IR or use, you know, a Kemper, a Studio Profile or something. So, consider that a feature that's just fun for kicking around the house. Well, I have been HW and you have been watching Tone Junkie TV. Thank you so much. Please subscribe. I think we should do another one of these. I think I should get some of the other cabinets that people are inevitably going to request at the bottom in the comments saying, why didn't you get this? Why didn't you get this? Why didn't you get this? So here's the answers, guys. All that's coming up on uh, part number two. HW, out. <laughs>